Oh, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you guys, as well as you ladies, for all that you do to help the Joe Boo Sports Report be what it is. And I'm not sure exactly what it is. But whatever it is, we are here and we are here for you guys. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods this morning. Oh my God. Shout out to, of course, so as the music stops. Damn, Gina. Damn, Gina. Here it is. I overslept this morning. Um, yesterday was a long day. Got up at four o'clock in the morning because had to get some pieces for a charity event for Yolanda Fletcher. They're raising money for the school, so I had three butcher blocks that they're going to be giving or auctioning off uh, down there, so I had to make sure I got those done before I went down the road because I had to take care of some other business. Then I found out my dump trailer was stolen. You know, uh, how are you going to steal a dump trailer? And, and they took the trash with it, so at least they did take the trash. So I'm going to look at that as a positive. At least they didn't dump the trash and leave the trash to take the trailer. You know, there's always a positive in every situation. But went down there, got back, and I started working on our plaque, our Dak Prescott plaque that's going to go to him. He wanted all the names on there. And shout out because we had four more people who donated um, after we'd done the original one. So those names are added on to it as well. And this morning, once I get finished here, I'll start recarving the other side of it. And the one that we're going to give away with the people who donated, we're going to do a drawing. Uh, we may do it Friday night. Um, I just got to finish getting all the stuff done on it, and I got to get all 140 of the names put down, written down, and put into a hopper so we can do those. We're going to be giving that one away, and I got to carve the names on the back of it. But it took like four hours to carve the 140 names, 144 names onto it. And I finally finished it last night at about, I want to say 1230 was when I finished it. Um, so I had done my fireside chat and I thought, oh, okay, this thing will be done about 10, 11, 12. And I tried to stay awake. I stayed awake. I stayed awake because you can't leave the machine running all night. But finally went down there, got it squared away and went to bed. And I just could not get up this morning. It was some much needed sleep. But. I woke up this morning by the grace of God and Gina had a da -da -dun, da -da -dun. Damn, Gina. update about Stefan Diggs. Now you may recall there was some cryptic tweets of Diggs and you know, um, Josh Allen is a man of few words when after the cryptic tweets happened, you know, Diggs ended up saying, you know, I always want to play with my brother. And, of course, that started the rumor. Well, oh, the Cowboys going to trade for Diggs. Diggs and Diggs, you know, in Dallas and or, or so on. Well, that dream may be dead unless Trayvon plays in Buffalo. Because we have another mega, and I mean mega, wide receiver deal. Huge wide receiver deal. For Diggs, he got an extension, four years, $104 million, that includes $70 million guaranteed. So he's going to be at Buffalo for six more years, $124.1 million. Um, so unless Trayvon, and it's coming up soon, for him to get paid, unless he ends up going to Buffalo, that dream is dead. Here's the thing that's crazy right now, and it, it's too early to tell. But remember what they used to say about um, quarterbacks. That when you pay quarterbacks big money, that the big quarterbacks weren't winning Super Bowls. You know, when after the rookie contract that you paid this big boatload of money to quarterbacks, that they weren't winning Super Bowls. We're going through now, and we're seeing Devontae Adams going to L.A., uh, up to, excuse me, to Oakland, God, to Vegas, geez, to Vegas and getting a big contract. We're seeing Tariq Hill going to uh, Miami, getting a big contract. Of course, we see Diggs getting the mega deal here, there. In a couple of years, it'll be interesting to see if these mega deals do lead to 
Super Bowls or not. And I'm going to go ahead and actually, I wasn't ready for this. And I, I went up skew here. But here's the thing. And this could be the argument that you have of saying Amari Cooper being gone is going to hurt the Dallas Cowboys a lot as well. Because here's what's crazy, and people won't say this. They won't say this very, you know, at all. They only do this kind of comparison and things when it comes to Dak Prescott. But here's the thing that's interesting. If we look at Josh Allen in 2018, uh, five and six record, um, 320 attempts, 169 completions, right? Um, his completion percentage was only 52.8, 2,074 yards, um, 10 TDs and 12 interceptions. If you take the other years away, what would you say about that as a rookie quarterback? You wouldn't say that that's very good for that sample. If you go into the next year in 2019, you look at that and say 20 TDs, nine interceptions, 3,000 yards, you know, uh, a 58.8 completion percentage. You're still not saying that's a great quarterback. You're just saying that's below average. Right? We think of Josh Allen. Oh, my God, Josh Allen, he's great. But, see, here's where you look at and see where Buffalo realizes, wait, we need to hold on to digs at all costs. Because your yard average, your yard average per pass, 6.7. The third year, they get digs. All of a sudden, everything changes for Buffalo. Everything changes. Take a look. His completion percentage jumps up by almost 11 points. His yardage jumped up by 15 points. His TDs jumped up by 17. Um, his interceptions right there in the middle. And his yard per average, 7.9. And that's the case you look at that and say, yeah, this guy is important for our offense. And his numbers have been fantastic. They have truly clicked. They have truly clicked together. So you can look at that and say, Stephon Diggs made Josh Allen or made him a better quarterback tremendously. That the talent that he had brought to that team and that roster Change the dynamics of that completely. And Josh Allen, being a man of few words, tweeted, yes. That was it. Just yes, after seeing that. So now all of a sudden, <laughs> now all of a sudden, things get to be a lot more interesting because now you've got DK Metcalf, who's in the last year of his deal. And so now, if you are DK Metcalf or you're some of these other guys, or even CD Lamb, if you're CD Lamb and you're thinking, wow, coming up down the road, you see how much money this is jumping up. Oh, shit. If I have me a great year as the number one for the Dallas Cowboys, I'm going to make this look like chump change. I'm going to make it look like chump change. So, yeah. I would say look for CeeDee Lamb to have an incredible season because this is almost like a contract year for him. This will be the third year, and after that, they can start talking about that contract extension. And with the money that's coming down the road, they still haven't figured out who's going to have direct TV. And once they do, if it's Amazon or if it's going to end up being uh, Apple, both those two companies have a lot of money, a hell of a lot of money. And hell, Jeff Bezos might be the new owner of the Washington football team at the way things are going on with uh, if the allegations of skimming money for the commanders. If that turns out to be true, that would probably be the straw that breaks the camel's back and gets uh, Dan Snyder out of Washington. So congratulations to uh, Stefan Diggs getting that money. And we'll see if this new strategy pays off. Because here's what's kind of interesting to me. Here's what's kind of interesting. 
And I need to go through, and I will, I'll go through and look at the numbers, but I kind of said this a few years ago, that it's not always the best receivers that are the ones winning the Super Bowls. We've seen Tom Brady without great wide receivers for years. You know, we look at Antonio Brown. Now, he is kind of more in the twilight of his career. He finally got a ring with Tom Brady, but you didn't look at Antonio Brown as the dominant big receiver like he was with um, the Steelers. What really seems to be the bigger piece, now again, Tariq Hill, you could say, yeah, he got one. But what seems to be the bigger piece in this and lost in the muddle is the tight ends. You can pretty much look back in almost every Super Bowl winning team over the last 10 years, and they've all kind of had a dominant tight end. You know, a George Kettle, a, a, um, a Gronk, um, damn, Kansas City. But all of these Super Bowl teams always seem to have a great, great tight end. Not just an average one, a great game-changing tight end, more than having the game-changing wide receiver. That's at least my, my premise. I'll have to do some research here to determine if that is actually the case, but it seems like that is more the case. You think about um, the Eagles. The Eagles, when they won the Super Bowl, they didn't have a lights-out, dominant um, wide receiver, they had a great tight end. And so we'll see if this philosophy of I've got to get a great wide receiver pays off. And right now, if you're Seattle, which is now saying that DK Metcalf, we're not even taking calls on DK Metcalf. Um, probably you're not taking calls because – people are probably calling so much that it's jammed up the lines. You know what I mean? Back in the day when you used to try and call in the radio station to, you know, try and win that prize, that album or whatever, you know, you just get bump, 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 bump. We're not taking any calls because it's the lines are tied up. But you have to think that Seattle is going to play coy and try and maximize what they get for DK Metcalf because they're in a full-blown um, rebuilding process. And then you look at the Cowboys when you start seeing this and say, all of a sudden, Amari Cooper's deal doesn't look quite as bad as what you're seeing that's going on now. There has to have been some other dynamics that just said, we can't deal with this. We, we just have to have this guy go. Because it's not like you're going to find a game-changing wide receiver on the cheap. And this brings me back to Cedric Wilson. To have gone through and said, we can't afford Cedric Wilson. You got to realize that now the market for wide receivers has been reset. It has been blown away. And now what Cedric Wilson just got, that's chump change. That's chump change. And on the flip side, I will give the Cowboys a little bit of credit here because if Michael Gallup has a full recovery, if the flashes we've seen from him of being a deep threat do come to fruition, then the Cowboys maybe have got a bargain for him and locking him down. Maybe they saw this coming down the train tracks and all that. Or maybe the Cowboys just looked at it from the standpoint of saying, um, and I, I want to give credit to Mike Mosher because I saw this in a tweet this morning. And it makes some sense that for the Cowboys, the way compensatory picks work, if you lose a player and they sign a big contract elsewhere in free agency, Mari Cooper doesn't count. But when you lose a player in free agency and you do not sign somebody's contract in kind, that's how you get compensatory picks. We ended up getting a fourth round pick, I think, for Andy Dalton because Andy Dalton walked. We didn't sign anybody with a contract anywhere near. Last year, we ended up with the four compensatory picks because we lost Byron Jones and, and um, Robert Quinn and, and, you know, multitude of players. And that's where we got this. It could be that the Cowboys are saying, let's not sign any big free agent contracts because we don't want to lose those compensatory picks down the road which is a way to look at it, but you say 
you know, maybe I could have Bobby Wagner. Maybe I could have Bobby Wagner on the team on a on a deal that's okay. Or maybe I get a fifth round compensatory pick. I guess it's the way you look at how it's valued. I would value having a game changing linebacker more than a fifth round pick, but I don't own the Dallas Cowboys. So with that being said, we're going to get up here and get to work because we got work to do up here uh, in the, the shop. I got products I got to get out to you guys. And we're going to have Friday. Uh, we got something new that's going to be happening with the channel here um, that's going to be good. Uh, I believe it's going to be good. So hopefully it's going to be great um, for myself personally and to help out you guys as well. So we are constantly evolving, growing, changing, and everything else to bring you the best content. Uh-oh, wait, wait, hold up, hold up. Wait a minute. As we sit here, I think, I am I getting one? 11 seconds ago. Da-da-dun, da-da-dun. Damn, Gina. Okay. More details on Stefan Diggs. He gets $21 million signing bonus and $70 million in total guarantees. And the cap number for 22 goes down as well. So, shout out to... Da-da-dun, da-da-dun. Damn, Gina. So that brings me to one more point while we're still here. Here's the thing that most teams have been doing as they've been going through and doing these contract extensions and signing new players. And people look and say, they only had $7 million. How the hell do they make these deals? The NFL realizes the cap is going to blow up. I've been telling you guys this for a year with the new CBA, okay? The new CBA agreement, that money hasn't even started counting it. All that money from gambling that's going there. All these extra games, we're talking about games in Mexico, Germany, and Europe, and everything else. All of the revenue that is coming from the new television contracts, okay? Where they basically paid a billion dollars a year, are now paying like $4 billion a year on some of these contracts. Where DirecTV was less than a, a billion dollars, we're looking at Amazon or Apple paying about $7 billion dollars. Projections are the salary cap will be around $470 million by 2026. So teams understand this, and so they're making cap numbers low this year and kicking the money down the road. Everybody but the Cowboys. Everybody but the Cowboys. But maybe, just maybe, I used this analogy the other night, that like if you've seen like the old, you know, Wrath of Khan Star Wars, right? I think it was Wrath of Khan. But you got William Shatner up there, you know, and they're, they're waiting, they're waiting, they're waiting, they're waiting, they're waiting. They're getting in closer and closer and closer. And it's like, you know, you need to fire this shit, okay? You need to fire, okay? We're about to be obliterated. No, wait, 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 wait. Fire! And they fire and they destroy everything. It could be that the Cowboys are like, okay, we're going to wait. We're going to wait. We're going to let the compensatory picks and stuff not get ruined by signing people. We're going to hold on to our money. And then in that second round of free agency, we're going to be firing everything we got out. Could be. Maybe. We only have hope. I mean, we only signed two outside free agents, and that's it. We've done nothing. We've held all our ammo. Anyway, it's time to roll up out of here. Our coach here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the show.